Rudolf Hogg postulated that the interaction picture does not exist in an interacting, relativistic quantum field theory QFT, something now commonly known as Hogg's theorem. Hogg's original proof was subsequently generalized by a number of authors, notably Dick Hall and Arthur Whiteman, who reached the conclusion that a single, universal Hilbert space representation does not suffice for describing both free and interacting fields. In 1975, Michael C. Reed and Barry Simon proved that a Hogg-like theorem also applies to free neutral scalar fields of different masses, which implies that the interaction picture cannot exist even under the absence of interactions. Topic. Formal description In its modern form, the Hogg theorem may be stated as follows, consider two faithful representations of the canonical commutation relations CCR H 1 O 1 I display style H underscore 1 O underscore 1 carrot I and H 2 O 2 i display style h underscore 2 o underscore 2 caret i where h n display style h underscore n denote the respective Hilbert spaces and o n i display style o underscore n caret i the collection of operators in the CCR. The two representations are called unitarily equivalent if and only if there exists some unitary mapping. U display style U from Hilbert space H one display style H underscore one to Hilbert space H two display style H underscore 2 such that for J o 2 J equals u o 1 J u minus 1 Display style O underscore two carrot J equals U O underscore one carrot J U carrot minus one. Unitary equivalence is a necessary condition for both representations to deliver the same expectation values of the corresponding observables. Hogg's theorem states that, contrary to ordinary non-relativistic quantum mechanics, within the formalism of QFT such a unitary mapping does not necessarily exist, or, in other words, two representations may be unitarily inequivalent. This confronts the practitioner of QFT with the so-called choice problem, namely the problem of choosing the right representation among a non-denumerable set of inequivalent representations. Topic. Physical heuristic point of view As was already noticed by Hogg in his original work, it is the vacuum polarization that lies at the core of Hogg's theorem. Any interacting quantum field including non-interacting fields of different masses is polarizing the vacuum, and as a consequence its vacuum state lies inside a renormalized Hilbert space H R display style h underscore r that differs from the Hilbert space h f display style h underscore f of the free field. Although an isomorphism could always be found that maps one Hilbert space into the other, Hogg's theorem implies that no such mapping would deliver unitarily equivalent representations of the corresponding CCR, i.e. unambiguous physical results. Topic. Workarounds Among the assumptions that lead to Hogg's theorem is translation invariance of the system. 
Consequently, systems that can be set up inside a box with periodic boundary conditions or that interact with suitable external potentials escape the conclusions of the theorem. Hogg and David Ruel have presented the Hogg-Ruel scattering theory, which deals with asymptotic free states and thereby serves to formalize some of the assumptions needed for the LSZ reduction formula. These techniques, however, cannot be applied to massless particles and have unsolved issues with bound states. Topic. Conflicting reactions of the practitioners of QFT While some physicists and philosophers of physics have repeatedly emphasized how seriously Hogg's theorem is shaking the foundations of QFT, the majority of QFT practitioners simply dismiss the issue. Most quantum field theory texts geared to practical appreciation of the standard model of elementary particle interactions do not even mention it, implicitly assuming that some rigorous set of definitions and procedures may be found to firm up the powerful and well-confirmed heuristic results they report on. For example, asymptotic structure CF. QCD jets is a specific calculation in strong agreement with experiment, but nevertheless fails by dint of Hogg's theorem. The general feeling is that this is not some calculation that was merely stumbled upon, but rather that it embodies a physical truth. The practical calculations and tools are motivated and justified by an appeal to a grand mathematical formalism called QFT. Hogg's theorem suggests that the formalism is not well founded, yet the practical calculations are sufficiently distant from the generalized formalism that any weaknesses there do not affect or invalidate practical results. As was pointed out by Paul Teller, everyone must agree that as a piece of mathematics Hogg's theorem is a valid result that at least appears to call into question the mathematical foundation of interacting quantum field theory, and agree that at the same time the theory has proved astonishingly successful in application to experimental results. Tracy Lufer has suggested that the wide range of conflicting reactions to Hogg's theorem may partly be caused by the fact that the same exists in different formulations, which in turn were proved within different formulations of QFT such as Whiteman's axiomatic approach or the LSZ formalism. According to Lufer, the few who mention it tend to regard it as something important that someone else should investigate thoroughly. Lawrence Sklar further pointed out, there may be a presence within a theory of conceptual problems that appear to be the result of mathematical artifacts. These seem to the theoretician to be not fundamental problems rooted in some deep physical mistake in the theory, but, rather, the consequence of some misfortune in the way in which the theory has been expressed. Hogg's theorem is, perhaps, a difficulty of this kind, 